So I've given talks at pharmaceutical companies where they want me to give a talk on the mechanism of the ketogenic diet so they can sort of reverse engineer some drug to target a mechanism. And when I throw up you know, that panel there that shows all the mechanisms, I think they get depressed because they realize a drug's really not possible. So here's the biogenic uh, or bioenergetic effects of ketones. And in this case, it's just uh, the brain. So the liver is the site of ketone production. So under situations of suppressed glucose, uh, gluconeogenesis, in the liver and also suppressed insulin signaling and mild glycogen depletion, the liver produces these ketone bodies as acetyl-CoA from beta oxidation of fatty acids accumulates. And the acetyl-CoA condenses together to form acetoacetate and then beta-hydroxybutyrate. Beta-hydroxybutyrate is the primary ketone body in circulation because it's more resistant to degradation, whereas acetoacetate uh, can be spontaneously decarboxylated. But beta-hydroxybutyrate needs to be broken down to acetoacetate to be used as fuel. So keep that in mind. But acetoacetate is essentially the oxidized form of beta-hydroxybutyrate. So the point is, the liver makes ketones but does not use ketones as an energy source. It lacks succinyl-CoA transferase, and uh, that's very interesting because cancer cells also lack this enzyme. Many, most cancer cells lack this enzyme that allows the cancer cells to use the ketone bodies for fuel. The liver is the production center for ketones. When insulin signaling is suppressed due to low carb intake, ketones are made. Fatty acids are converted into the fuels acetoacetate, beta-hydroxybutyrate. The liver makes ketones but does not use them for energy. Most cancer cells also cannot use ketones for energy. So these ketone bodies spill into circulation and uh, they bypass many of the regulatory steps associated with uh, the glucose uh, being able to support bioenergetic functions. So in the case of impaired GLUT1 glucose transporter 1 deficiency or GLUT3 deficiency, that's the transporter on the membrane of neurons. Uh, in, in the case of th those being deficient or not functioning, or in the case of Alzheimer's disease or traumatic brain injury, the GLUT3 transporter gets internalized inside the cell, and then the glucose can't, can't get into the cell. But ketones bypass that process. It even bypasses pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. So if you have pyruvate dehydrogenase complex deficiency syndrome is treated with the ketogenic diet. So for kids that have this, they need to be on the ketogenic diet. Uh, PDH is also impaired in Alzheimer's disease and also traumatic brain injury. In the case of the GLUT1 or GLUT3 deficiency or in Alzheimer's disease or traumatic brain injury, ketones bypass these regulatory steps and enter the brain, and they also bypass pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, PDC, which converts pyruvate into acetyl-CoA used by the Krebs cycle. So PDC syndrome is treated by a keto diet. So in Alzheimer's disease, so we know Alzheimer's disease is characterized uh, as glucose hypometabolism, and uh, the hallmark characteristic of Alzheimer's disease is a decrease in intensity of a fluorodeoxyglucose PET scan. So there's less of an intensity uh, showing radioactive glucose present in the liver. There's less uptake of glucose. It's also interesting to observe that uh, a number of studies showing that cerebral blood flow increases about 30% during acute hyperketonemia. Alzheimer's disease is glucose hypometabolism. Less uptake of glucose into the liver. Cerebral blood flow increases 30% during acute hyperketonemia, low cerebral ketone uptake. Aided and summarized, easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.